So we're talking about projects. And this week we've passed a big milestone in projects that we went over 5 million projects that have been shared in our Scratch online community. So I thought it'd be good if we spent some time talking about the idea of projects in Scratch. And we thought it'd be even more interesting if we invited Yoren, who's one of the original Scratchers, right? And uh, who's now at MIT and is one of several young people who started as Scratchers and now are contributing as part of our Scratch team. So maybe to make sure everyone is aware about what we're talking about with Scratch, oh, Scratch. to give a little background to, yeah. you know, Scratch is a programming environment that we created that allows people to create their own interactive stories and games and animations, and then importantly, share their creations online with one another. So when we talk about these 5 million projects, that's people around the world, generally ages eight and up, who have created these interactive stories and games, and then on the website, share them. And once they're shared, other people can both see what they've done, play with what they've done, make comments on them, they can even remix it. They can take what someone else has done and use it as a starting point for creating their own projects. And I think one thing that's been really exciting for us is that it's not just the number of projects, but the incredible variety of projects. You look at the Scratch website and you just see so many different things, not just stories and games, but virtual tours and, uh, you know, you know, dress up doll games and I remember early on you just couldn't believe family once it launched and you started seeing some of the things people had made this interactive game that a family had made right mm -hmm. that was in two languages and it, 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 it's great every morning we wake up and there are thousands of new projects that have been created and I think we learn a lot even though we developed the scratch programming language uh, we didn't know what people would do about it and we tried to make it so it's easy for lots of people to do we wanted to sort of unleash creativity from lots of people. So we wanted to make Scratch to be intuitive for everybody to use, as intuitive as putting Lego bricks together. So in fact, it's modeled the same way, the same way that you can build a structure by putting Lego bricks together. You build Scratch programs by putting graphical programming blocks together, telling each of the characters what to do. So under each of those millions of Scratch projects, each one is based on characters, and each character has different stacks of programming blocks telling them what to do. And we, the idea was trying to make it so it's easy to get started, but you could do more and more complex things over time. Uh, Seymour Papert always talked about low floor and high ceiling, easy to get started, but you should be able to do more and more complex things over time. Uh, maybe, maybe it's best to hear more about it by talking to Joran about some of his experiences. I know that we launched Scratch, I think it was in May 2007. We'd been yeah. working on it since like 2003, and we launched it to the public in 2007, and you found out about it shortly thereafter, right? So you, you were growing up in Belgium, and maybe you tell us just how you found out about it. So I was indeed growing up, um, just turned 12, um, looking for some environment. I was, I was excited about making games. I saw these games around me, and I was looking for a way to make these games myself because I thought it had to be possible somehow. And at one point I found out about Scratch and it turns out that um, I started making um, this one particular game. Um, and soon thereafter, only a few days, I found out there's a way to, um, to share the projects that I made that I was excited about to a community of people that shared this excitement. And this had been a problem before because I'd been trying some things, um, but I couldn't really go anywhere with it. And now I found this community that sort of was excited about the same things I was, and I could then share my projects and get feedback on it, which really drove me to continue. May, may tell us about the very first project that you created? So I think the first project I created was um, this, this small platformer game where you draw this, um, this world with a, a bouncing basketball that bounces around and basically travels to space and back, I think, if I remember correctly. <laughs> um, yeah, somewhere on the Scratch community, I found a way to to make this ball bounce, sort of like it looked like it had gravity applied to it. So you're already learning from other projects in the community yeah, I, as yeah, you were creating yeah. it. Yeah. I think so. And and then I, I I had a lot of fun drawing all these levels around it and make, like, sort of making a story around it. 
Uh, and then when you put it online, did you get some feedback from others? Oh, I definitely remember? did. Yeah. And I, I thought it was really surprising because I wasn't quite expecting it. So I expected to upload to this website so I could go to my friends and tell them, hey, mm. I put this project online. But before I, before I even got to do that, I got all these positive comments about, hey, you might, maybe you should add this and this, or this isn't working too well yet. And so it was very interactive. Uh, and, and did you make revisions based on some of those things? Or oh, at least yes, did I, did. Oh, yeah. I I definitely up, uh because the Scratch website allows you to upload a new version of a project yeah. with a few updates. And so I it's just probably did. using this creative learning spiral <laughs> that you had sort of, you, know, you had an idea for a game, you created it, you experimented with it, you shared it online, uh, people gave you comments and it gave you new ideas. It definitely did. Yeah. But I know we first really became aware of the work you were doing. You did a project of a, a virtual Lego construction right. kit, I remember. Uh, and it was something that we noticed it because even though we developed the language, again, we didn't think something like that was going to be possible. So when we yeah, saw that you did it. it like was... 3D, it's not made for supporting 3D, but somehow you made a 3D project. So how do you get the idea of that? It, it's, it made... So around that time, Lego uh, made an application called Lego Digital Designer, mm -hmm. which was exciting because I could build things with blocks that I didn't have. Yeah. And it was very big <laughs> and... Well, physics also were in the thing, so you could build structures that didn't exist. And I was wondering if there was a way to sort of do this for small models in Scratch. And I ended up drawing the, uh, I ended up drawing these blocks in a certain grid so that when you place them on top of each other on the screen, it looks like you're building a 3D model. And at first this was completely random, but I remember then, I think it was my dad that helped with finding a way to sort of make them snap mm. to this as a metric grid, it still was a little flaky, but a lot of people <laughs> liked it. It was, it was interesting to me. Yeah. So, maybe like your experience with Scratch, how did do you think it influenced other things that you were doing or other ways? So, I think it's been fairly interesting because what Scratch really taught me is that I found this particular project I wanted to work on, and then there, it might require a few techniques I didn't master it until that point, but it, it was a very good reason to, to learn these new, these new techniques. And I feel like for mostly everything I've done since 2007, which is a long, <laughs> long time ago for me, a large fraction of my life, um, this is really what I've been doing because Scratch itself brought me, like through the Scratch community, I gained an interest in um, building websites, which I've done in, in a very similar way. I wanted to create this particular thing for Scratch, in fact. And then I learned what I needed to learn to be able to do that in, in much in the same way I did for making projects earlier. Would you say like at, at MIT as a freshman, have you been able to do projects or? In, in fact, yes. Okay. So, so we had this project last week that was very, very similar. We could come up with an idea and then none of us, obviously, as incoming freshmen, there's all these tools you can use, like laser cutters and, you know, just general craft techniques. And just by doing that project, we learned everything along the way uh, in, in a similar way. Right. So it's, it, it's always sort of being excited about the project first and then learning in the context of the right. project. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I know that for us, as we were you know, developing Scratch from the beginning, Certainly, there's certain things that we knew people would learn that I think people look at a programming language and you know that there's going to be some mathematical concepts and computational concepts that you'd learn. And I assume you've learned some of those as you've worked <laughs> on Scratch and others. I think for, and then some of those are important. I think for us, we were especially interested in this, how you learn about the whole process of design. Uh, so in addition to the specific concepts, it's learning about how you can, as you were describing it, how you can experiment and iterate, how you can test and debug things. Yeah, and we designed the language. Like I know that's one of the things there's very few or almost none no error messages because you some languages they're telling you often, no, that you can't do that or that doesn't work. And we wanted it to be the feedback that you get as you're creating it to help you know what works. So we talked about designing it for tinkerability, right? So that you can tinker with it and you could that was a really high priority to be able to see as you build, just try it out and each block you could click on and see what does it do. And each piece of it, you could try it out as you're going. So yeah, I don't know, do you feel yeah, That's like very that much the way I, I experienced making projects in Scratch is while you're working on it, you don't, your idea is not fin 
you don't even have your full idea yet. Your project is not finished, but you, you can build a small part and see it running and then tweak it as you go to... And your idea develops as you see what you've been doing before. And so, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. one thing that attracts us about programming or coding is it's sort of easy to test out your ideas quickly. That you can sort of try it out and sort of see if it works or not and then respond based on it. And also like the whole idea of mistakes or, you know, it's just a bug and the debugging is known. You That is part of the process, right? No matter what, you're going to need to be debug it. And that's just, you know, it's like a, almost like a could be an interesting or fun part of the process rather than, oh no, it doesn't work. Like, oh, interesting. I got to debug it and it might give you other ideas. Okay. Well, I feel like the interesting thing about Scratch is that it never really doesn't work. It just doesn't work the way I want it to work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good distinction. Yeah. yeah. I think one thing also we try to, you know, want to have it as a contrast to the way a lot of young people grow up using a lot of digital technology these days where they spend a lot of time just sort of browsing and chatting and playing games, but not designing and creating things. So I think we saw Scratch as a way to help people sort of design and create and express themselves. Um, and it's nice that I do feel that in the last several years, there's started to become a greater recognition of the importance of that, the same way that the maker movement has grown over the past decade and recognized the, the value of making things and you know creating things to share in the world. There's sort of analogously been this coder movement of you know recognizing the value of people not just interacting with uh, computers, but creating with the computer through coding of being able to do that. So uh, it's, it's nice to to see that more people are recognizing the value of that. But often the way that it comes up, and where it's something I worry about anyway, where part of the movement is just to get them to learn to code, and it's kind of walking through and saying, here's what you need to do. It's like a puzzle. You have to solve this, and here's how you do it. Even if it could be a fun, it's like a fun context, like get the robot through the maze or make, you know, follow these instructions to make a game. But at the end, what I worry about is that people don't come away feeling like, oh, I could make anything I want from this, or I could have my own idea with it. It's like so much about learning to code that it gets away from this idea of being able to create whatever you want with it, right? So you don't necessarily see yourself as a creator. I think for us, yeah. that identity part of working on projects, it's not just what you've created, but how you start to see yourself differently, that I am the type of person who can create things. I yeah. can do things in the world. And sometimes like what I say with the tool, rather than, I don't want people to come to it and say, what am I supposed to do? But more like, oh, what do I want to do with it? You know, mm -hmm. that it's inviting that kind of having, coming up with an own idea. And it might be looking at other people's projects or other things in the world that makes me want to do those. Yeah. I do think this contrast between like puzzles and projects, and there's nothing wrong with puzzles. I enjoy doing puzzles. Uh, on the other hand, there's, there's one set of things you can learn. You can learn some you know, concepts that way, and you can learn certain skills that way. But some of these other things, this idea of how I could create anything or to work on things I really care deeply about is different. It, for me, I, it's the same analogy with it's great to do crossword puzzles, but that's very different than learning to write and express yourself. Uh, in fact, we often talk about the analogy between coding and writing, uh, that the same way that you know, not most people aren't going to grow up to become professional writers, you know, journalists or novelists. But it's important for everyone to learn to write because it's a way for them to express their ideas and it, you start like to think differently. Like in a letter or a poem or whatever right. it is that even you want to write a song, right? Well, it's even practical too. You can make by write a shopping list. So it's both practical yeah. and write you write a letter to a friend. Uh, also, you start to think differently. You start to organize your thinking differently when you learn to write. I think we see the same thing with coding that it's a way of expressing your ideas. You can make a you know, interactive birthday card for a friend you know, once you know how to code and you start to organize your thinking and think systematically in different ways because of it. But I worry that most people don't see it that way of this form of expression. If you're just solving a puzzle, you learn some concepts, but you don't have this idea of a fluency, a way of expressing Well, and also yourself. a lot of the emphasis is on young people should learn this because someday you'll get this great job, right? Yeah. Rather than thinking right now I want right. to make a game or animation. Yeah. Do yeah. you feel like that? Yeah, it's different. I mean, it's, for me, it's always been, it's exciting to find solutions, but it's even more exciting to find solutions to problems that I've come up with myself. Yeah. <laughs> in a yeah. way. 
and and that is really what creating the scratch project has been because you don't know what's going to come up along the way you have a certain end goal that might change as you're working and you come up with all these problems along the way and then you solve those and that has for me always been a lot more motivational yeah. that problem but it involves problem finding and problem yeah, identifying right. and yeah. as you said coming up with the, pro the, the problem and I do think yeah it, having both aspects of that is, is, is so important um, and for everybody but again as, as you were saying that too often it gets talked about the possibilities of jobs and careers and the people saying that are right there are going to be great job opportunities and career opportunities and it's great for people to learn to become professional programmers professional computer scientists on the other hand, I think these experiences are important for everyone, whether you grow up to become a marketing manager or a politician or a community organizer, everyone could, you know, needs to express themselves with, you know, with new media and new technologies and new ways of thinking. Um, yeah, and I think it changes your relationship, especially since we have technology all around us. Again, rather than it being something that you're supposed to figure out how to do, you start thinking about, I think the more that you design something, you're like, why did they design it like that, right? and start thinking, how could it be different? And I feel like that's a really important, empowering more people to be questioning the technology and think, I would design it differently, and maybe I can even try to help design it differently. Yeah. This reminds me of this experience I had with, um, when obviously being here, um, I met a lot of other scratchers that started around the same time, and we found that there's one thing we all had in common, and it's that after getting, spending a lot of time making scratch, every single one of us, lost interest in watching TV <laughs> simply because you build up some sort of feeling about why why is this why is this plotline this way why don't you do it like you get this feeling that it should have been different or you could have changed something and that the medium doesn't allow for that interaction <laughs> it's really interesting you know. well I do think it gives a new lens for looking at the world right. you start thinking about you know why did someone make it that way? You, you start thinking of the world as a designed place because you can be a designer too. You can be a creator. So you start wondering why did people create things that way? I remember you were with my niece when she was really little. I think she was only three and I was showing her the programmable like a motor and light. And right away she started thinking she saw and she started to say, I want it different every time. So I started, she wanted the color. Every time you push the button, it would be a different color. So we were rewriting the program. And then when we turned on the motor, she was like different every time. So I was thinking she's getting this idea of random and it, it is what I want it to do. Starting to have that relationship, even at a young age. Because sometimes I'm tentative about young young children using technology. As you know, that's sometimes we have a difference in opinion where I really worry about it. But I felt good about the fact of using it in this way in which she felt, again, that she it was something not just that she was supposed to respond to and it was telling her what to do, or as Seymour Papert would say, rather than having the computer program the child, the child is programming the computer. And I really saw that with her, and that's how she still sees things today, I would say. So I think it's great for us to share our experiences with, with programming and coding and what we've seen. But probably the best way for people to really get an experience with it is to try it themselves. So it's great that this week people hopefully will take a chance, will take some time to try out the Scratch software. So they'll be, uh, we'll have an introduction to Scratch coming up and it'll be, I really look forward to seeing how people make use of Scratch to start sharing their ideas. Because I know we continue to learn every time we see what other people have created with Scratch. Uh, you know, the same way that we mentioned Seymour Papert talk about low floor and high ceiling, and we also talk about wide walls, that we want people to be able to use it in many different ways. So as more people use Scratch, it's great to see all the different ways they use it. So it'll be great to see how people here start experimenting with Scratch and to hear about their experiences uh, uh, with learning to you know, sh you know, express their ideas through coding.